Good morning, dear students. Here we are with the concluding part of the chapter two, sexual reproduction in flowering plants. Before starting this video, I want to recall all the important terms that we have discussed in our last videos. The most important term was microsporogenesis. That was the formation of microspore tetrad first, and later on, these microspore tetrad they develop the pollen grains. Here, I also want to mention that pollen grain contains two in unequal cells in it, which are vegetative cells and the vegetative cell and the generative cell. This generative cell nucleus is protruded through the pollen tube, which divides into two male gametes at the time when it is adhered on the stigma. By pollen pistil interaction, this pollen tube is formed and male gametes are transferred to the embryo sac of the female part. The another term was megasporogenesis in which the sporogenous tissue within the ovule that first develop into megaspore mother cell. These megaspore mother cells are formed by meiosis. Out of these four megaspore mother cells only one remain active to form the embryo sac and that we called it monosporic type of embryo sac. In the embryo sac there were three antipodal cells, diploid nuclei, polar nuclei, one egg cell and the synergids. Now in this video we will discuss that how these pollen grains they are uh, scattered on the stigma of the pistil and later on what changes occur. So here we are starting with this video. First of all, we have to discuss about the term pollination. Pollination is transfer of pollen grains from the opened anther of the stamen to the receptive stigma of the carpal. So transfer of pollen grain from the stema, stamen to the stigma of the carpal is called pollination. Now we have categorized pollination into major two types, self-pollination and cross-pollination. Now self-pollination involves the transfer of pollen grain from the anthers of a flower to the stigma of the same flower. That flower should be genetically similar. Whereas in cross-pollination, the pollen grains are transferred from one flower to the stigma of the other flower which is on other plant. But the species should be same. Then only the fusion of gametes is possible. So that is the main categorization of pollination, self-pollination and cross-pollination. Now self-pollination, it is of two types, autogamy and clistogamy. See, autogamy is giving you the meaning, auto means self and gamus means marriage. So in this kind of pollination, the pollen grains from anther of a flower are transferred to the stigma of the same flower. It generally occurs by three methods here. Yeah. Now this table is showing you that autogamy is transfer of pollen grains to the stigma of the same flower of the same plant. Now this autogamy occurs by three methods. Clistogamy. This is in those plant which never open. Right? So only self-pollination is possible in them. Like in oxalis, viola, comelina. These flowers undergo clistogamy, that is a method of autogamy. Another type of autogamy is homogamy, where the anthers and stigma of a bisexual flower, they mature at the same time. And because they are maturing at the same time, only cross-pollination is, sorry, self-pollination is possible. And this is generally seen in Mirabilis and Catharanthus. Right? Now, after autogamy, the next category, next type of self-pollination is zitonogamy. In zitonogamy, zito, ziton means neighbor and gamy means marriage. Means in this kind of pollination, the pollens from the anther of one flower, they are transferred to the stigma of another flower born on the same plant. Still the plant is same, right? Only the flowers, they are different. Now, if we talk about advantages of self-pollination, first of all, the chances of pollination are more here. Self-pollination maintains the purity and 
in this process of pollination the flower do not possess any device like showy petals presence of scent or nectar because they do not need pollinators for pollination process but there are drawbacks of self pollination also in self pollination the chances of production of new species is decreasing right and every progeny continuously they get weaker because the same undesired character they are pass on to the next to next generation clear yeah? now the other category of pollination is cross pollination which is also known as xenogamy or allogamy cross pollination involves the transfer of pollen grains from the flower of one plant to the stigma of flower of another plant here plants are changed so that's why we call it xenogamy xenos means strange and gamy means marriage right or allogamy also we say it allo means other and gamos means marriage if marriage or fertilization is occurring in other plant or strange plant another plant so that type of pollination is called cross pollination or we say allogamy or xenogamy now here for cross pollination there are specific floral characters because here we need the pollinator right so the first character which is required by the flower is hercogamy hercogamy means the flower they possess a mechanical barrier on their stigmic stigma to avoid self pollination that is called hercogamy means like pollinia is present in calotropis or gynostegium is present so these structures they avoid self pollination another character which is required is dicogamy dicogamy means the pollen and the pistil they mature at different time to avoid self pollination now in this we have discussed in our earlier classes that protogyny protoandry means either the gynosium is maturing first or the androsium is maturing first so the time of maturation is different so it avoids self pollination the third characteristic feature is self incompatibility self incompatibility is the property of the plant when the mature pollen fall on the receptive stigma of the same flower but fail to bring self pollination means they are not able to form the pollen tube or they are not getting some chemical stimuli to form the pollen tube that condition is called self incompatibility another character is male sterility means the pollen grains of some plants they are not functional they only germinate when they are attached to the stigma of another flower or dioecism means unisexual flower obviously if the flower will be unisexual self pollination cannot occur and the last character which is required for cross pollination is heterostyly now heterostyly means the flowers of some plant they have different length of stamen and style so by self pollination is not possible like in primula or linum plant this heterostyly character is seen now as we have discussed that cross pollination they require pollinators or they require agents for pollination now these agents may be abiotic or biotic abiotic means either wind water is required for their pollination now wind pollination if air or wind is helping in spreading of pollen grains to the stigma that is called anemophily anemo anemo means wind so this type of pollination generally seen in grasses sugarcane bamboo coconut date palm cannabis like these plants they undergo anemophily in hydrophily as the name is indicating water is required for the transfer of pollen grains and this is very much common in aquatic plants like valicinaria jostera hydrilla these plants are showing hydrophily after this the biotic factors may also act as the pollinating agent and these biotic biotic factors they include insects as the agent for pollination and that type of pollination is called entomophily now this insect pollination these are very interesting and 
questions are from this from this topic entomophily that is particular in particular plants like there are special adaptations there are special structures developed in the flower for insect pollination for entomophily uh, let's uh, discuss about first pollination in salvia plant now in salvia what happened that the genus cell salvia which belong to the family labiate in this gamopetalous corolla it is two lipped by labiate the lower lip provide platform for the visiting insect and upper lip is just like the hood which protects the floral organ now this these flowers are protoandrous now when the insect sit on the lower arm the upper arm it spread the pollen grains on the back of the insect and when this insect move from this flower to the other flower the pollen grains they reach to the other flower this is how pollination occurs in salvia with the help of insect similarly in yucca in yucca plant pollination is a obligatory symbiotic relationship between the yucca plant and its insect pollinator pronuba that is the name of that insect what happen here the female moth that is the insect visits the pendulous white flowers at night now first of all it collects the pollen grain from the anther in form of balls on their back then it inserts its ovipositor into the ovary of the flower and deposits the eggs there after this deposition of eggs it climbs to the top of style and pushes the pollen grain in the hollow of stigma to bring about pollination so without this insect the pollen grains cannot reach to the stigma so this insect pronuba is helping in sending the pollen grains from the stamen region to the stigma region so this is done by the insect and that's why this is called the obligatory symbiotic relationship between these two like this pollination in orchid of iris that is also a very strange relationship with its insect pollinator uh, a hairy wasp now these orchid bears flower which resemble with the female wasp in color odor and appearance now male wasp wasp when it mature they leaves the burrow after 4 weeks before the female come out open so these in experienced male they try to pseudo copulate the orchid flower and by during this pseudo copulation they are actually transferring the pollen grains to the stigma of the flower so this is how with the help of hairy wasp orchids of iris they undergo the process of pollination similarly the peculiar inflorescence of ficus plant hypanthodia it also require wasp pollinator for pollination right air also this pollination only get completed with the help of this insect so there are some obligatory symbiotic relationship between some flowers some plants and insects so entomophily is very important um, type in cross pollination the next type of pollination is uh, Chiroptophily, chiropterophily, chiropterophily means where the pollination is done with the help of bats, right? Like in plants of uh, Cagelia, Adansonia, Bohemia. These plants, they mostly they their flowers bloom during night, and during night these bats they help in transfer of their pollen grains to the stigma. so that type of uh, cross pollination is called characterophily another type is malecophily molecophily is done by the snails in aquatic plants mainly now ornithophily ornithophily means when the pollination is done by birds birds like sun bird humming bird crow bulbul parrot they are involved in the process of pollination uh the the birds they visit variety of flowers like calistemon uh bombax bignonia these plants they undergo the process of pollination with the help of these birds so here we have discussed about the different types of pollination 
as we have discussed self pollination it can be within the same flower or it can be within the different flower of the same plant uh, we call that autogamy and zytogamy then cross pollination where we have discussed about the biotic and abiotic factors and how these biotic and abiotic factors are helping in the process of pollination so this is about pollination after pollination when the pollen grain reach to the stigma of the pistil then pollen pistil interaction occur right when this pollen they get spread it they get the receptive surface of the carpel uh, the germination of pollen grain on the stigma and growth of the pollen tube through its style up to the embryo sac they need some favorable physical and chemical condition and that's all depends on pollen pollen pistil interaction now in this pollen pistil interaction there is a particular sequence which will be followed by the pollen grain that how this pollen grain will germinate will form the pollen tube and when the pollen tube is formed through its style how it will reach to the embryo sac now this pollen grains first of all remember that pollen grains they have exine which is composed of sporopollenin there are some cavities present in the exine which are filled with the specific proteins right these proteins or this exine they are derived from the tapetum remember tapetum during sporogenesis so these all chemicals are derived from the tapetum they are sporophytic they are having some sporophytic phytic recognition factor means they they can only recognize the sporophytic reason and the intine on the other hand it consists the proteins and polysaccharide of the haploid spore therefore they are gametophytic in origin the stigma of some angiosperm are wet wet stigma they possess proteins amino acids lipids in form of free floating secretion now these chemicals they are again sporophytic in origin so there is interaction between the chemicals sporophytic chemicals of the pollen grain and the sporophytic chemicals of the stigma and these interaction determine whether the pollen grain will germinate or not so this is all about pollen pistil interaction which decides first which check that either the pollen tube will be formed or not and if pollen tube form then the next first step goes on that is fertilization this self incompatibility this is also important characteristic feature where the angiosperm plant they possess a capability to inhibit the germination of pollen grain or the growth of pollen tube to avoid inbreeding means inbreeding cannot take place same species or same pollen grains will not germinate now this chemical control of the plant is called self incompatibility now this self incompatibility is achieved by the interaction of chemical substances produced either by the male gametophyte and the tissue of style right the stigma they have received particular number of pollen grains from the particular plants either they are of same mating types or different now what happen if a pistil is carrying functional female gametophyte they get pollinating with the right mating type and pollen pollen grain if the pollen grain germinate but if the pollen grain does not germinate it is called incompatibility now this incompatibility can be dif between different individual of different species interspecific incompatibility or it can be between different individual of same species intraspecific compatibility this intraspecific compatibility that occur between the member of same species is also known as self sterility right now this incompatibility involve many physiological biochemical morphological mechanism which are associated with the interaction of pollen and the tissues of stigma and they are controlled by some genes 
right these genes which are showing interspecific incompatibility are con is are controlled by genes located on different loci of the chromosomes right now the incompatibility is achieved by genetically controlled physiological or morphological process like either the pollen germination is prevented or pollen tube is not able to penetrate into the stigma uh, pollen tube is not able to grow within the style or pollen tube cannot enter to the ovule or if it enter then also fusion of male and female gamete does not take place and even if fusion takes place after syngamy embryo get aborted it will not start dividing further to form this uh, for a uh, seed or other structures now this in for self incompatibility is divided into two major morphological types means heteromorphic where the two morphological indistinct mutative type occurs within the species which cannot which with with that is called heteromorphic mean morphologically they are dis, different and homomorphic where the two mating types they are morphologically similar but they they require pro, proper breeding test then only the breeding can be done so here i also want to mention gametophytic and sporophytic self in as uh, incompatibility as we have discussed that if the incompatibility is controlled by the genotype of sporophytic tissue which is in in from which wo pollen is derived or the sporophytic tissue of the stigma then it is called sporophytic incompatibility and if it is done due to the genotype of the male gametophyte that means the pollen grain genotype of the male gametophyte it is called gametophytic incompatibility that will be due to the male nuclei which are formed after the division of generative cell so this is all about self incompatibility a uh, individual question can be formed from this topic self incompatibility so you have to go through this slide again and you have to prepare your notes properly and don't forget to draw this flow chart because this flow chart itself is giving you the description of different types of incompatibilities within the plants okay so now when self incompatibility we have discussed plant breeders they also avoid self pollination they also no, want to do hybridization mixing of gametes of plants which have the desired character for this the plant breeders they have to follow proper steps and these steps include the method of emasculation and bagging uh, emasculation what is that it is the removal of stamen before they dehyze or they or they, the pollen grains are destroyed from a flower without affecting their female reproductive organ means we kept a flower which is only having the functional pistil or the carpel in it the male part is removed so that is called emasculation and after emasculation the emasculated flower need to be enclosed within a bag to avoid pollination of the unwanted pollen grain because it is artificial method it is done by plant breeders so plant breeders they want that only the pollen grains which we they want should get should spread on the stigma they only should enter through the stigma so to avoid the other pollinations we cover those plants with the bag and that technique is called bagging it is a method to avoid self pollination artificially okay now after this the pollen grains they have reached to the stigma now when the pollen grains they reach to the stigma now they will recognize that either the stigma they are compatible or not and once they are recognized this recognition is done by the chemicals which are attached or uh, the uh, water and the recognition proteins which are absorbed by the pollen grain 
and these chemical stimuli they will give the signal to the pollen grain that now you can either form the pollen tube or not now when the pollen tube if the compatibility is there if they are compatible to one another the pollen grain and the carpal they are compatible then pollen tube will form now this pollen tube they will start transmitting through the tissue of style during this the tube it excretes the pollen tube excretes exogenous pectinase enzyme or some other hydrolytic enzymes to create a passage for its entry right now in most of the monocots this style is hollow so there uh, it is not so long process but in case of dicots the hydrolytic enzymes are required so that the pollen tube can grow on their way to the ovary now once they reach to the ovule after reaching to the ovary the pollen tube will enter into the ovule now this entry can be from the micropyle which is called porogamy or it can be from the chalazal end that is called chalazogamy or it can be from the lateral sites which is called mesogamy chalazogamy is found in casuarina plant late uh, mesogamy is found in cucurbita plant but porogamy porogamy where the pollen tube is entering from the micropylar end is the most common way for the entry of pollen tube now once the pollen tube is entered what will happen the pollen tube which with allow which will allow the entry of the male gamete to the embryo sac now here the first male gamete the first male gamete fuses with the egg to form zygote right so this zygote formation and is by the process called syngamy or generative fertilization and this diploid zygote will finally develop the embryo the other male gamete it fuses with the with two polar nuclei to form the triploid primary endosperm nucleus pen p e n and this process is called triple fusion or vegetative fertilization so syngamy and triple fusion or we can say generative and vegetative fertilization togetherly these two act constitute the process of double fertilization here i want to mention this double fertilization process was first demonstrated by navashchin in 1898 in the lily lilium plant so this is about fertilization now after fertilization the plant will undergo some post fertilization event now our post fertilization events which include the development of the endosperm around the zygote or uh, how the zygote will develop into an embryo and how this embryo will be coated inside the seed so all this comes under post fertilization events so first of all we will discuss about development of endosperm now here this picture is showing you the different type of endosperms we know we you have to know that there are three types of endosperms they may be nuclear they may be cellular or they may be helobile right this diagram is showing you how these three types of endosperms are developed the initial stage you can see it will it is containing the zygote and the pen primary endosperm nucleus so that the division that will occur will be in the pen only in case of first of all we will talk about uh, cellular endosperm in case of cellular endosperm the first nuclear division in the primary endosperm nucleus is followed by formation of transverse cell wall and subsequent nuclear division and wall formation result means whenever the nucleus will divide cell wall is also formed around it so the whole endosperm which is surrounding the zygote will be cellular this type of cellular endosperm is found in petunia datura balsam plant so they all have the cellular type of endosperm the second type of endosperm is 
showing you the nuclear endosperm in this nuclear endosperm the primary endosperm nucleus divides by repeated free nuclear division mitotic division which are free nuclear means walls are not formed around them because of that large number of nuclei are formed in the central cell of the embryo sac right so what happened so all the nuclei they are there present finally all or most of the endosperm they are converted into cellular part it this cellular or cell wall formation starts from the periphery as you can see in the second j diagram j diagram where the wall formation also occurred so in case of coconut as you have eaten the coconut the endosperm is multicellular in the outer part the creamy white region that we eat and the juice that we drink that is the free nuclear endosperm right so that coconut is an example showing you the nuclear endosperm the third type of endosperm is helopile endosperm in helopile type of endosperm the primary endosperm nucleus it moves to the chalazal end of the embryo sac as you can see it has reached to the bottom chalazal end now generally the chalazal end cells they do not divide further and they function as the hostorium they remain at their only right and the nucleus of the large micropylar cells they divides with the free repeated nuclear division right so the further development takes place in the same way as nuclear endosperm so at the bottom part basal apparatus is there and the rest part is new uh, free having free nuclei so they have the both portion the basal apparatus which is cellular and the free nuclear region so that is called helobile endosperm and they are formed generally in monocots monocots they have the characteristic helobile type of endosperm so i hope development of endosperm is clear to you now don't forget to draw these diagrams they are so simple once you will get the logic here so you can draw and you can write about them okay now after the development of endosperm around the zygote the zygote itself will undergo divisions right now zygote will develop into embryo and we have studied in our junior classes that the embryo can be either dicotyledonous or monocotyledonous so we have to go step by step the common type of endosperm embryo are dicotyledonous so first we will talk about dico development of dicot embryo now in dicot embryo what happen the zygote it undergoes first the transverse division by which a terminal and a basal cell is formed now the terminal cell will undergo periclinal division the vertical cell division right and the uh, basal cell the basal cell will undergo the transverse division now this basal cell will develop the suspensor right and the upper two cells of the embryo they will they will form the embryo part right so the embryo part the terminal two terminal cells and the tetrad stage of longitudinal four celled suspensor that stage is called quadrant stage right now each this stage quadrant stage will develop again and will form the octant stage so this th fourth diagram is showing you the octant stage now later on what happen these uh, eight cells of octant they divide periclinally and 16 cell stage is formed right eight are forming the external protodermal region and eight are forming the internal region now the suspensor cells which are situated at the terminal end of suspensor they will start acting like the uh, hypophysis hypophysis that cell which is attaching the globular head region with the suspensor region that cell attaching cell is called hypophysis this hypophysis undergoes transverse and the longitudinal division at the cells of inner tier towards the embryo they start developing and the developing embryo uh, initially it is globular showing you the radial symmetry and finally within this globular pro embryo 
this embryo it starts developing radical plumule and cotyledon region now these cotyledon are arising from the two ridges which are at the distal region of the pro embryo and the globular embryo it starts forming the heart shaped stage you can see how this globular stage is turning into heart shaped stage and when these cotyledons they elongate they finally convert into torpedo stage where we can easily uh, distinguish the two cotyledons the cotyledons and uh, the rest of the parts of the embryo so this is how the development of dicot embryo takes place here you have to remember which stage is first zygot then the two cell stage then quadrant stage octant stage later on the globular stage is formed this globular stage starts differentiating into the heart shaped heart stage and the heart stage will finally develop into differentiate into torpedo stage so this is how development of dicot embryo takes place in case of monocot embryo in monocotyledons about one half of the terminal cells they have the derivative function as shoot apex whereas the remainder of the cell they show rapid rate of cell division in form and form the and form the terminal cotyledon so what is happening the uh, terminal cells they are forming the shoot apex region and rest they are involved in formation of cotyledon so only one cotyledon is formed here and that is resulting into development of monocot embryo right finally after double fertilization the transformation of ovule into seed occur and when zygote is developing into embryo the triploid primary endosperm nucleus which is forming the endosperm it starts nourishing for that development of the embryo now this whole ovule if they have prop some amount of endosperm tissue within them so those type of seeds they are forming the albuminous seeds like in case of wheat corn but if this endosperm is totally used up in the development of embryo they are called ex albuminous seeds like in bean pea gram now these ex albuminous seeds they usually store their reserve food in the cotyledons right they have cotyledons to nourish the embryo now this new cells which is generally used up during the development of embryo uh, but in some cases it remain outside it exist so this if it exist it will form a layer called perisperm in the seed as you can see here in the diagram also the outer integument become hard and leathery which is called testa and the inner integument which if persist it is called tegmen right now the funicle of the ovule it will form the stalk of the seed this stalk or the hilum is the point where the seed is attached to the stalk so this is this diagram is giving you the development of seed how what are the structures within the seed of a monocot and a dicot seed this gram seed is showing you the dicot seed structure and uh, this may seed is showing you the monocot seed structure right uh, labeling are important here so please go through the labelings next now after the development of seed formation of fruit will occur now this true fruit is formed as a result of cell division and differentiation in the ovary the ovary is actually transforming into seed now after receiving all the necessary stimuli the ovules present inside the ovary transform into seed ovule are transform into seed and the wall of ovary is transformed into pericarp pericarp generally we call it fruit walls right now botanists they have divided the fruits into two main categories the true fruits and the false fruits true fruit also called eucarp means here the fruit is derived from the ovary of a flower not by any other non carpillary part of the flower that is called the true fruit that i like mango 
ਬ੍ਰਿੰਜਲ ਬਨਾਨਾ ਟਮੈਟੋ ਗ੍ਰੇਪਸ ਕੁਕੰਬਰ ਪੀ ਤੇ ਆਲ ਆਰ ਟ੍ਰੂ ਫਰੂਟਸ ਵੇਰਸ ਫਾਲਸ ਫਰੂਟਸ ਵਿਚ ਆਰ ਆਲਸੋ ਕਾਲਡ ਸੂਡੋ ਕਾਰ the fruit is derived from the ovary along with some accessory floral parts means some accessory floral parts are also the part of fruit for example in apple and fig the main edible part that we are eating are the fleshy receptacles they are not the carpal part that we are eating as fruit they are the receptacles which we are eating so on that basis we have divided fruits into two types true fruit and the false fruits yes apomixis now we have discussed about sexual reproduction in plants and we have gone through that double fertilization occur and syngamy results into development of zygote triple fusion result in the development of endosperm but sometimes there are some deviations from these this simple type of double fertilization one of that deviation is apomixis what happen in normal sexual reproduction the flowering plant it involve transformation of sporophytic cells into gametes first by meiosis and then fusion of gametes occur during the process of syngamy and that zygote will develop into embryo and ovule will transform into seed but in some members of estrace and grasses they have the capability to develop seeds without fertilization here remember apo means without mixis means mixing means without mixing without fertilization seeds are formed right so formation of new individual by the mean of asexual reproduction that which includes seed formation also but not the fusion of gametes that type of reproduction is called apo mixis right like in citrus fruits in mango they all the here the new cells it develop into seed right seeds are formed with the help of new cells and in case of parthenogenesis also where the formation of embryo was taking place with the help of other parts except then uh, egg a uh, fertilization does not occur there so that is also apomixis right uh the other so this apomixis is very helpful in for the plant breeders see what plant breeders want actually they need the hybrid plants but to maintain the hybrid plants the purity of gametes maintenance is a very time taking task so when we are undergoing the genetics when we are studying the genetics of apomixis we come to know that during apomixis the offspring the progeny that is formed it is identical genotypically identical with the parent plant so why not to go under uh, through the process of apomixis this apomixis will help us to developing the hybrids by the process of hybridization we can uh, maintain a homozygous line of parents and there is those homozygous lines may help us for hybridization process or in the formation of heterosis to increase the vigor to increase the capability desired characters within the plants so apomix is a very fruitful method for plant breeders right the another process and another deviation from the general sexual reproduction double fertilization is polyembryony now what in, ha- happen in polyembryony the formation of more than one embryo takes place during the development of seed and this was first identified by leuven hock in 1719 in citrus fruits this polyembryony they it is formation of more than one embryos this fertilization of more than one embryo sac at the same time that will result into development of more embryos from a single fertilized egg this polyembryony again is it very important for plant breeders and in the process of horticulture development of fruits and uh, fruits and vegetables so this is polyembryony my students they often get confused about apomixis and polyembryony here i want to differentiate them clearly that apomixis is a type of asexual reproduction where seeds are formed without fertilization meiosis does not occur here but 
then also seeds are formed whereas polyembryony is formation of more than one embryo by the single fertilized ovum right here fertilization occur in apomixis fertilization does not occur okay in apomixis because fertilization does not occur it is a asexual mode of reproduction while in polyembryony the seeds are formed by the fusion by the fertilized ovum and that fertilized ovum is developing many embryos so it is a type of sexual reproduction okay so fertilization does not occur in apomixis and in polyembryony fertilization occur for apomixis does not involve production of seeds right whereas in polyembryony seeds are formed many embryos are formed and in apomixis the offspring which are produced they are genetically identical to the parent whereas in polyembryony because fertilization of gamete occur so variations may be there so this slide is giving you the differentiation between apomixis and polyembryony i hope it is clear now so that's all about for today we have completed the chapter number 2 reproduction in flowering plants if you have you like this video please click on the like button and don't forget to subscribe the channel thank you bye to all